Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Ed Talk TV, conversations worth having. I'm your host, Ed Troxel, and I hope you are having a fantastic Monday. Boy, had it been a day, a good day. So tell me where you're tuning in from, even if you're watching the replay. Real quick, just in case you are new around here, we encourage you, and I say we because I have a great audience that comes and participates in the comments. So we encourage you to comment, not just for this post, but for your benefit too. Commenting allows you to get seen. Yeah, that's part of my job is to help you show up, deliver, and engage. So be sure to share in the comments, even if it's just to say hello, I'm catching the replay, or hey, you know, Ed, just this is my first time, like, I just want to say hey, hi because you were here and you said to say hi. Um, I'm going to double check in the comments here to make sure we are live. Perfect. Ooh, look at this new. Look at that. You guys see this? Always something new. Hi, Erica. Um, but that has been popping up lately and that allows you to do a little chat. So let me just do a little chat test with our testing. They made it a little easier. To, hey Vicky, they made it a little easier for you to be able to make those chats because before, this is totally side subject by the way if you're new around here, you just never know what you're going to get and things when something new pops up, we're on it. So just FYI. Hey, hey, um, let us know uh, how you found us too by the way. Um, so as you can see, I just did a chat with Erica there and it popped up and it buzzed over here and it has a two. So if I go into that, it actually provides a separate conversation. This is not what we're going to talk about today, but since it's new, I want to show it to you. Um, see, hey, hey, interesting. So that popped up and then look at this. You can add people to your chat. You probably can't see that, but you can add people to your chat. So if I had Mickey there, I can add her and then I can add more people too. So it's really cool. Um, this is all part, I think this is all part of their whole, um, making sure to kind of have your watch parties and to kind of have your friends hang out in the private conversations. Before, you might have noticed, um, hey, Vicky, yeah, it's back to midnight where you are, right? Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Vicky is in the UK. Um, before, they did have the chat feature, but it actually was transparent. And so when you were in a chat, uh, definitely a lot of things could go wrong because you would think that you're in a chat but maybe you're posting to the to the wall uh, during the live broadcast, so there's that. Um, but today we're going to talk about how you can change up your customer service. I have a real life example. We're going to talk about what I did this weekend and uh, what I observed because it's going to help you and uh, your business. Before I do that, I just have to let you guys know real quick, uh, if you are looking for past episodes because we cover so much good content and we're on what, episode 61 I think this is? Yeah, 61. You guys, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, episode 61. So we've covered so much in the past. If you want to uh, see it, I'll put it in right now. And because a lot of you are listening, I'll tell you as well. You can go to edtalktv.com. Not now, but later. Uh, that's the website for this show. Um, you'll also find uh, guest requests. Tomorrow we're going to have a guest on the show. I'm excited about that. So if you ever want to become a guest, you can always uh, go to edtalktv.com. Fill out the form there and be set to go there. Uh, there is training if you're looking for that. And last but not least, if you're looking for business and tech support uh, ongoing for quick questions and things like that, you can head over to edtalktv.com. It's there in the menu item, so it doesn't matter if you're there or on my other websites. Um, and click on Hey Ed. Why? Because this is, you guys, I can't, I, this is the only promo I'm really doing, okay? So um, share this with friends as well. Don't forget to let them in on it. But uh, those who are interested, Hey Ed is my new monthly membership. It, You guys, it's ridiculously low right now. And, and I'm not just saying that to like help with sales like that. It's just, it is low. Um, rest assured it is going to go up, um, but it will still be low for a monthly subscription to me and my community. So Keep that in mind. Um, you're probably asking yourself, who's this right for? Entrepreneurs, nine to fivers, um, teenagers. If you have a teenager and they're trying to learn about business and tech, like, let's do it. I mentor teens at, uh, at uh, high school here. Um, what did I say? Nine to fivers, um, small business owners, um, anybody basically who has a business or wants to have a side business and struggles with tech. 
I mean, that, that's really what it is. And um, it, it's, it's only going to get bigger. Uh, I'm really excited about it. Some of you guys are already in it. Uh, make sure to check your... Uh, your new uh, member feed because I did post a valuable resource for you. So I want to make sure you see that. Okay. Um, thanks, Erica. Yeah, Erica's in there. And we got Mickey. We got a few others. It's awesome. Okay. So that was my promo. There you go. You guys can uh, run with that later. Um, and I will put the link in there for you guys as well. So today, what we're going to talk about is going to be for... Um, let me just go ahead and get that for you guys because that way I can focus on you guys. Um, hey, there we go. So this is going to be for you guys. Pause. Boop. Okay. There's the link for anybody who's interested. Um, so we are going to talk about the uh, customer service. Basically the customer experience. Customer service is going to be tied into that. Um, before I do, let's talk about some random news just because I have random news today and I would like to share it with you guys. So... Um, one thing, because we kind of talked about this last, well, we did talk about it a lot last week, is uh, time versus money, right? And how we have to either trade our time to do the research ourselves and, and not pay anybody, but we're, we're paying with our time, or we save time and we pay with our money, right? Well, this um, there was a tweet that went out um, just the other day. Just some random person who uh, their grandma discovered Urban uh, Eats. Uh, I haven't actually personally used this feature yet. Uh, Erica might have this in the city probably. Uh, but Urban Eats uh, allows you to, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but you uh, can basically order your food and somebody brings it to you. And so uh, somebody's grandma discovered just how convenient this is and had her Wendy's delivered and was surprised. Uh, the text said from grandma to, to the, uh, I think the granddaughter wrote, um, she wrote red car outside my house. The other person wrote, that's the Uber eats guy. He'll bring you the food. Wow. He brought me Wendy's. Like she was super stoked about it. And I guess she ordered it again, uh, within less than 24 hours. Now what's funny though. Okay. So how many of you uh, know about uh, Urban Eats, like having that delivery, or is it Uber Eats? Might be Uber Eats. Uber Eats, sorry. Urban, Uber, whatever. Um, so Uber Eats. <laughs> I use Uber Eats sometimes, but yep. So, okay. So Erica, you have experience with that. Awesome. Anybody else have experience with that, even if you're catching the replay? I have not yet in my area because we're, we're kind of still like, country-ish. Um, so we don't have that necessarily. Um, you have it out there, Mickey? Okay, cool. What's funny is somebody in the comments, and see, this is why it's it's fun to go through the comments. Uh, a couple people in the comments were like, um, you lost me at $18 for delivery. Because I don't know how much uh, Uber Eats charges you for delivery. But remember, you have to buy your meal, but then you also have to pay the delivery. And so, of course, you know, if it's for grandma or if, if it's for you and you're like, well, sh shoot, it saves me time. I don't have to go out and I don't have to do anything. Well, then again, you're back to, are you trading your time or are you trading your money? And if you're willing to spend 20 bucks on a simple Wendy's meal, well, and then you're complaining later that you don't have time or you don't have money to be spending on your business, well, then you got to prioritize things, right? I I'm just I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not saying anything. If if you're a Wendy's person, Taco Bell, whatever, I'm not saying anything. I, I'm just I'm just making an observation. Thankfully, Grandma's probably not working on her side business right at the moment, so she's good. Um, so there's one random news, and then just because this is happening tomorrow, and I know that some of you guys are Apple people too, because I'm an Apple guy. Uh, tomorrow. They, uh, they, Apple, is having a event in Chicago. It's not going to be live streamed, though, apparently. It's just going to uh, be at um, one of the Apple stores there in Chicago. Let me see the comments real quick. That's why I don't uh, use Postmates. They're usually the most expensive one delivery fee-wise. Yeah, okay, more affordable. Okay, good to know, good to know for any of the, you guys who have that. See, the comments are the best part, part about the show, I think. I think the comments are 
the comments are probably better than what we're delivering every day, right? Um, but of course, that's what sparks the comments. So there you go. Uh, we used to have restaurants on the run back in the 90s. Yeah, it went away with the recession. Some same idea, but back now, better economy. Yep, good. Hey, Whitney, welcome, welcome. Uh, so with uh, the Apple event tomorrow, for how many of you guys are Apple people? Uh, let me know in the comments, but they're having this event. And we're not going to talk too much about it today because I kind of want to save it to maybe Wednesday because we have a guest tomorrow. Um, but I do want to point out that it's going to be all around education. And if you uh, aren't familiar with Apple events, when they send um, event notices to the press, they're usually very short and sweet. And everyone has to try to guess what's going to happen. And so for this one, the invitation said to the press, quote, let's take a field trip. And then it promised, quote, creative new ideas for students and teachers. That's it. That's all that they put on their marketing for the most part whenever they're sending out invitations. And that was for this one coming up tomorrow. So if you're ever curious about um, how how you can make your marketing a little bit more what's called curiosity marketing, it's kind of like you're just hooking them a little bit, take a look at Apple's past press invitations. Take a look at how they word them. Take a look at the design and see why, even if you're not an Apple person, you probably are just straight up PC and that's fine, but you're doing your research. And so in that research, you're gonna look and see what all the hype is. Like why, why do people always, you know, think that there's more to the invitation than there really might be? Because there usually is, so keep that in mind. Uh, I thought you meant you only order. Oh, <laughs> Mickey's having a conversation with, uh, Erica there. Awesome. So keep that in mind. So those are your two random news for today. Now, let's talk about the experience I had this weekend. So first off, how was your weekend? Did you guys have a good weekend? Even if you're watching the replay and this could be next Friday, I don't care. If you're watching this, let me know how your weekend was. Um, but when I started on Friday, I actually, after the show, because if you were here on Friday, you know, we had one heck of a Friday afternoon, didn't we? We really did. Um, so, and of course I didn't delete that because that's a show, that's an episode. And just, it proves to you guys that once you start going live, you can just keep going live. It is what it is. A and you just keep rolling with the show and you just keep things moving along. So uh, that's why it's still up, you know? Uh, there's still content in there. There's still conversation in the comments and all of that stuff. So there's that background. But um Friday, I decided to pretty much kind of take it easy for the weekend. I told myself, I had to psych myself up. I don't know about you guys. Um, hey, Mindy, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I kind of have to psych myself up and like tell myself, okay, Ed, it's the weekend. We're going to actually have a weekend. We're not going to work. We're going to work, but not work, Ed. We're, we're, we're going to relax. We're going to try to take a break, okay? You have to you have to catch up on your reading. You have to uh, finish some books. I'm, I'm reading Crushing It right now by Gary Vee, which is awesome. But it takes me forever to read books like that because I analyze everything. I take notes on everything. I mean, this this is why this is what you get, right? Uh, so I ended up uh, taking it fairly easy. I was pretty much off of social for pretty much the weekend. Um, I didn't answer messages and emails. Uh, it was very hard, very hard. How many of you guys can relate? Uh, but it was very nice because I actually got to relax and I didn't feel guilty about it. How many entrepreneurs feel guilty when you try to take a break? Because technically we're not supposed to take breaks. Um, but I did and it felt great and, and I felt refreshed today. I woke up like, boom, ready to go. Sun was shining. I said, let's do this. Pumped out a bunch of content this morning. And um, a lot of you guys actually, by the way, a lot of you guys have been asking for uh, a training, a paid training uh, around um, creating your own magazine, which is awesome because I have experience in that. That was my first business. So I actually uh, 
put that on the list, but then I was so inspired this morning that I actually wrote the whole entire outline for the training and now I'm working on the sales page and then I just have to pick a date and a time. So there's that heads up uh, for anybody who's interested and you can always send me a message if you need to uh, with any questions you might have. Uh, I may not respond directly to that question, but I will uh, look at including that in the training. So there you go. Um, but the point is this weekend it was relax time. Well, of course, when you're trying to relax and you can't work, well, what else are you trying to do? Well, your chances are you're going to go out and spend some money. Um, so I didn't spend a ton. Um, I did want to go, though, and get some workout clothes, get some new shirts, right? Because why not? Um, and so I went to our local Kohl's. Now, I don't know how many of you guys shop at Kohl's. Um, and quick backstory, because this does tie in uh, to probably what's going on with it. But uh, our Kohl's in our area actually was closed for a long time uh, because of the, uh, I think it was our October, our wildfires is when it started. Uh, <clears throat> we had the, the Northern California wildfires, like the really, really bad ones. That was in our area. And um, pause on that. And so um, they just recently reopened. So they've been closed for months now and they just finally reopened. So I went in because I wanted to see what they had. Let me see what Erica has to say here. I feel like I'm a small pool of entrepreneurs who is all about to <laughs> about the break. Yes. Yes, Erica. You got to have a break, you guys. Okay, that's a good point. Let me pause for a second because I want you to understand that you cuz this is this is a a serious thing about entrepreneurship and uh you know it it came up last night um and it's one of those things that I want you guys to remember I don't care if you're working a 9 to 5 and you're thinking about entrepreneurship or you're a full-time entrepreneur or you're like I'm I'm just I just heard you're a cool guy so I want to check you out um and I have no intention of doing my own business that's fine but this applies to everyone I want you to remember that just like anything else, you have to take a break. You have to do something else besides your business. And I'm telling you because I'm telling myself because I have to hear it too. Um, but you really need to uh, realize that it gets lonely. We get stressed out. We get burnt out. And it's not healthy. It's not healthy for us and it's not healthy for our business. Because if we're burnt out, we can't do anything in our business. Therefore, our business doesn't stay afloat. So we have to work together and connect with each other and be able to support each other and be surrounded by podcasts, videos, people, communities, like whatever works for you, you need to do it. It doesn't matter what the cost is right now. And, I, and I'm saying that because I know a lot of you are like, well, yeah, but Ed, I can't afford this. Listen, if you can't afford something, you have free podcasts right here in your in your hand. It's in your pocket. You have a free library you can go to and hang out. You have a coffee shop that you can go hang out at. You might have to buy a, a $2 or $3 coffee, like get the super cheap one if that's not what you're interested in. You just want to be there and you have to buy something. Get whatever's cheap on the menu. Like you don't have to be taking a course or be a part of a, a, a membership community or anything like that. I call it, well, I call my Hey Ed a membership community versus a membership group um, because I just like community and it, it's more of what we are. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? Like you choose what works for you and it doesn't matter the cost because everything is either affordable, so free to affordable to expensive. Like it's cross the board. You can find something that will work for you and you can reach out to your to your peers and to um, other business owners. If you are uh, got a local business and you got to shop somewhere, like hit up the person next door. Be like, hey, can we have coffee or something? Like uh, during a slow time, hey, are you struggling with, you know, X, Y, Z? Because I find that it's really hard to X, Y, Z. Like whatever it is, you need to make those connections. Um, Mindy says, when you have your own business, you have several jobs plus family. It's so important to give yourself a break. It is. You guys will say to yourself, because I've done this before, you will say, but I can't take a break, Ed. 
I, I just can't. I have so many things I have to do and I have all these things that I got to be um, paying attention to and then I got to pick up the kids and, and then I got to go to, you know, to um, this meeting and that meeting. Like there's no time for a break, Ed. There's just not. I, my calendar's full. Listen, your calendar's going to be full all the time. There's always going to be something that you have to do. What you need to realize is that you have to make time for you and you have to make that happen some way or another. Because if you don't, then you're going to be going downhill quick and then everything else around you will too. And that's not what we're about here. So there's that little little uh, info, info, PSA, whatever you want to call it, FYI. Um, great point, Erica. Yeah, Erica says, uh, churn burnout. Uh, true burnout is really taxing to come back from. Yes, it, it really is. If you really are burnt out, it is really bad. Put your break on the calendar. Yes. Okay. So this is a big one because we're, at the end of the day, we're all calendar people. I don't care if it's digital, written, it's on your wall. It doesn't matter. Um, but at the end of the day, put it in your calendar. You guys, when I first started, see, here's a tip for you. See, this is why you tune in because you just never know. And this is why you tell your friends. Um, so when I first started my business, I had to have a schedule. Even though I wasn't technically on a schedule, I still needed a schedule. Hence why I set office hours. We talked about that before. Um, but I also broke out my day. And I have, I still have in my calendar, I don't know if I can show you my calendar, so let me just take a look. Um, but I still have, um, <clears throat> yes, this one I can show you tomorrow's date. I still actually have um, in my calendar, I have gym time. I have my Facebook live show. I will have um, take the dogs on a walk. I will have lunch time. Like I literally put things in my calendar like that. Does it matter, mean that it's going to happen at that exact time? No. It's just a good reminder so that way I don't forget because I will forget and I will let things slide if I, it's not in my calendar. So it's a very important part to, uh, to note and to put all of that in there. And another thing, put that self-care. I, I don't care if you only got 10 minutes. You put that self-care in that calendar right after this show. Mental note, Ed said, put self-care in my calendar at least once a week just to get started. And self-care can mean a number of things. You figure it out, whether that's you just 10 minutes bubble bath uh, with no kids, no husband or wife or whatever, like that that's fine. If that means that you have to go to the library and sit by yourself for 10 minutes, cool. Like whatever, sit in your car with no distractions. I don't care, just do it for yourself because you need it. I suggest 10 to 15 minutes minimum because what happens is for the first uh, 10 minutes, we typically will still be thinking about the task that we were doing prior. So keep that in mind. Um, we, we need to adjust as needed. Exactly. Homework, add self-care to your calendar. There we go. Mickey said it. Mickey said it. Whitney, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Um, so sound like Shaggy. It wasn't me. Uh, but no. Uh, so... Back to today's, uh, so that was the little PSA. You're welcome. Uh, but I honestly, I want all of us to succeed. And uh, that's going to look different for our, all of us. It, it depends on where you're at in your journey. It depends on what your, um, what your route is. Because we're all going to have different routes. You know, I'm doing this full time. So my route's going to look totally different than your route if you're working a nine to five and you're just starting out and you're kind of like, eh, we're just going to play. We're just going to see what happens here. Like you have a great, a great option because you have your day job funding your dream job. So you have a security blanket there. Yeah, you may not have enough time to do all the things you want for your side business, but the bright side is you have income consistently coming in over there. You don't have to worry about the stress of being an entrepreneur and getting your next client or next big project, right? So you, you got to look at those benefits and you got to understand that your, your journey is going to be totally different than mine or Sally's or Bob's or whoever is next to you. So when you look at, because we just had this conversation actually yesterday, a friend and I, um, a couple friends, we went to lunch. And so we were talking about, you know, 
how Instagram, how many of you guys have Instagram? I mean, I do, but I know for me, Instagram is just a totally like, I, I compared yesterday Instagram to a magazine cover, right? A, a, an art exhibit. Uh, Instagram is so, I don't want to say fake, but it's fake. I know you guys, I know. Um, it sort of makes sense if you look at it, right? Because Instagram was originally like, you just post your best work there. And that's why it's been popular with, you know, photographers and uh, food bloggers and things like that. Um, but it's one of those things that you have to realize that there are so many fake posts on there. And we look at those posts on a daily basis and we think, oh man, Mindy's, Mindy just has the life. She's working her nine to five and she's not stressed. Look how happy she is with her side business. And she's making all this money because she's got a nice, you know, Toyota Rev4 2018 with the sunroof and the keyless entry. I mean, we could have went Mercedes, but I went Toyota because I was like, you know, let's, let's keep it a little bit real. Um, so, you know, like we look at the photos and we analyze everything and we think, oh man, they must be living the life. We do this on Facebook too, don't get me wrong, but Instagram, the way it's structured, it's a place that we do this more and it's because of the, that structure that it gives us kind of that false hope, that false uh, sense of reality. And when we're scrolling through real quick, we're like, oh man, they're, they're really doing good. Look at them. Like there, there they go. But what's the story behind it? And we have to remember that a, a lot of like hardcore Instagrammers, and if this is you, uh, you know, you can share how, how you go about it. I'm just saying a lot of hardcore Instagrammers will have that look to their profiles and will want to make sure that it's the best of the best. And then some of those photos may be photoshopped. They may not show the exact story, you know, when you see the, the cars and the boats and the, the, the parties and all that stuff. So we have to keep that in mind. Um, Mindy says, my day job was making me so angry. All the personal development on the side was opening my eyes to everything. Yes, I love it. Um, so I need to show real life with <laughs> Mindy. You do with Mindy saying, for those who are tuning in via audio only, um, Mindy says, so I need to show hashtag real life with the 2009 Toyota Selena with 165,000 miles. Yes, we all can agree that yeah, that is what we want to see. You guys, I am still rocking because I had to give up my Jeep a long time ago. Um, I'm still rocking my Toyota Scion XB. It's the Flintstone call, car, I call it, because it's like a box. It, it's like the ugliest thing. But because I came from curves, I went to box, like just flat. You guys, the doors squeak. The locks, only three of the doors, for the most part, will lock or unlock when you click it. The clicker still somewhat works. Uh, well, actually, no, it doesn't. I take that back. The inside clicker of the door works, but the clicker on the key ring, that doesn't work. You can press the button all day long and it doesn't do anything. You have to use the key. You know, um, the check engine light just came on yesterday and uh, I, I've taken good care of the maintenance and stuff, but that just came on. And uh, what else? It It's like, I mean, it's a great little car. It's the best little car ever, but it's a 2004 and you know, it's, it's getting up there and it's getting close to my time, but I also have to make sure that other things are in order first before I make any big decisions, hopefully without it giving up on me. But you know, like that's real life, right? And, and you know, sure, I'll take it to the car wash and then post a cool picture of it looking clean, but at the end of the day, it's still a square box car, like <laughs> with dog hair everywhere because I got two dogs and I always am taking them out. And so I, I can never have a clean car. You know, it's just the way it is. Toyotas do run forever, Mindy, which is my, my dilemma of whether or not I'm going to pay to have the check engine light fixed. Here's the, here's the thing, you guys. I really want my Jeep. I know this is side subject, but this is, this ties in. Um, I really want my Jeep and I've been studying them and I've been looking and payment wise, I'm going to lease. I decided I'm going to lease cause I don't want to own a Jeep. Um, so I want to lease and you know, payments are about like 250 a month, which I mean, that's a lot. Don't get me wrong, but 
when you think about like how much you put into an older car, you know, like for instance, if, if the check engine light is the start of this part, that's supposed to be like almost $300. I'm like, well, that's one car payment. But then if they find something else, plus a test, we're looking at two or three car payments that that could cover, you know? So that's like, that's my thinking, but I, I have to match everything and I have to lay everything out, uh, which is what you want to do whenever expenses come up, especially if you're running your own business, you need to make sure that you, that you pay attention to those things that you don't, you know, try not to step too far ahead without knowing as much as possible those expenses. So map them out. Excel spreadsheet is awesome. Even if you're not an Excel person, you just literally write everything out. Uh, pen and paper works too, but Excel is nice because then you can do the math and, and total things up. So anyway, um, for the experience, customer service, customer experience, let's talk about Kohl's. Um, so Kohl's was closed. Just a quick recap. My area, Kohl's was closed. They just reopened. I just went in there this weekend. And the minute I walked in the door, total, totally different experience. Totally different experience than any other Kohl's I've been in, including that one prior to its closure on the fires. Um, I'm just seeing Erica's comment. I've had a few Toyotas. Great brand. Now we're carless. Yeah, in the city. Yeah, if I was in the city, no car. Um, so the minute I walked into the door, I could tell that something was different about the location. And it's a two-story location. Um, I was mainly on the, on the main floor. And I realized as I was walking, and I, and I was trying to you know, answer some things on the phone, but I was being distracted by the store and the experience I was having, which is good, right? That, the fact that I could walk into the store and go from here to here and see what's around me is good. So I noticed that they um, had brighter lights. The lights were brighter. So it wasn't so dark and it wasn't dingy, but you know, lighting does have a huge effect as you can see right now, like this is natural light coming in. So if you have a store, if you're trying to go live from your, your bedroom, your basement, your office, like lighting is important. We know this. Uh, this was Kohl's. Yes, Erica, it's, it's, it's going to get more interesting. I'm just telling you guys what I'm, what I observed. Uh, we'll see how it lasts, how long it lasts, but it's definitely, it impressed me, which is why we're talking about it. Um, so lighting is key. We can see this right here. Lighting is key. That was the first thing I noticed. Then as I'm walking down the aisles, I noticed I had space. I'm going to put the elbows up just for space, you know, because if you're in the club, you're supposed to be like this. I, I haven't been in the club for a while, but you know, you're supposed to be like, you know, elbows up, lean side to side. So that way people will get out of the way. Um, so I, I had elbow space there. There was actually room in the aisles, right? How many, how many places do you go where the aisles are like this? So it, you're kind of like, Hey, I'm just going to get, Oh, I'll let you move your cart. Okay, cool. Thanks. That's a lot of stores these days. Everyone's trying to pack everything in and you can barely move through the aisles. Like, what are you supposed to do? Especially if you have a shopping cart. That's why it's always a pain when you try to get a shopping cart at the grocery store or something because there's no room to go down one aisle if somebody's already in it. It's like, okay, I'll wait, I'll wait here at the end. Just tap me out when you're, when you're ready to go. Thanks. So we had lighting, we had wider aisles, then... I noticed that there was associates, employees, in almost every section I went, or passed by, I should say, because I went to the uh, men's uh, fitness area, the athletic wear. Um, but as you're passing, you have the the women's um, like active wear purses, whatever, and then uh, you know all these other sections, jewelry and all that stuff. But there was people, associates, in every section. I was like, huh, that's cool. It's weird, but it's cool. I like it. And then I noticed they started asking people, including myself, do you need help? You doing okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm okay. Thanks. I'm impressed. I'm okay. I mean, I didn't tell them that, but, you know, I'm saying, dang, somebody asked me if I was doing okay over here. What store am I in? 
Is this Coles? I feel like this is Apple. Okay. I see you, Coles. You're doing a good job. I see you. Um, so then I, I found what I needed. And then I kind of, you know, wanted to carry on through the journey. Because I literally, I bolted in, went this way, and then here. And I was like, okay, I'm good. But I want to see what else is here. I want to see what else is on sale. I feel welcomed. Let's let's do this because I'm going to talk about this on the show. So I continue my journey and as I went through the store, I noticed there was, there was a lot of sales associates. They even had a sign out front saying now hiring. So they're still looking for more people. And then they had different people uh, in those sections. Uh, then I also noticed that they redid their checkouts, which was like, yes. Okay. How many of you guys have ever shopped at Kohl's? Even if you're watching the replay, let me know. I'm going to take a sip of water. How many of you ever shopped at Kohl's? The one thing, I mean, I don't shop there a whole lot, even before ours closed, but the one thing that drove me nuts was the fact that if I wanted to, remember mine's a two-story, um, if I wanted to return something or exchange it, I couldn't go to one of the five to 10 registers on the first floor, like any other store. I had to go to the back, up the stairs, and around to the only two registers that supposedly were marked only for returns and exchanges. You could still buy stuff there, but that was like the section. I was like, what kind of customer service is this? This is crap. Like, why the hell would I want to go in and go all the way up to the top when I can go to any register that's free. Most of the time I'd have to wait in line. Like it drove me up the wall. So now, now at our store at least, you can go to the big beautiful section that says customer service. There's probably about five to maybe eight registers. Excuse me, five to eight registers. It says clearly, Customer service, returns, exchanges, online orders. And I think it said sales, probably. So I had to go back today because I wanted to, to double check things. So I came in that entrance that's next to that area. And I saw right away when you walk into the door, boom, onto your right-hand side, online pickups. Right there, on the side, online pickups. And I thought... That's good. That's a smart move. They needed that because I don't think they had that before. So that helps, right? Trying to tie in online. We talked about this in uh, last week's episodes as well as the week before with the Toys R Us collapse. And so they're catering now more to the online person. And I, ha I have a thing that came up that you guys, you're going to be like, oh, I, I thought about this last night. We'll get to it. Don't let me forget. So I ended up... Um, really appreciating that factor that I don't have to no long, I no longer have to go all the way upstairs to the back to wait in line to return something or exchange it. I can go to any register. I mean that only made sense to me. Like every other store in the world has that option. Why are you guys special to have that not an option? So that's that's fixed, which is great. Um, then I couldn't find on the actual rack, the table, um, if they had uh, another size that I was looking for. They didn't have mine there, so I was wanting to find out if they had one in the back. So luckily, there was an associate. She was right in that area, and I asked her, and she was like, oh, yeah, let me go grab uh, a scanner. And so she comes back, and she had, it wasn't an iPhone. It was uh, some kind of Android phone that was a little bit bigger, uh, I don't know, uh, than my 7 Plus. But it was really interesting that she was able to, after two or three taps, she scanned the barcode and was like, well, what size were you looking for? And I saw on this thing that she could just tap it. And then all of a sudden it was like, unfortunately, we don't have that in stock. I was like, okay, cool. I mean, it literally took a couple seconds. All she had to do was scan and tell me right there in person, which is awesome. Let me look at the comments real quick. Yep. Mickey, yeah, hoping your walk through, yeah, there, obviously there's a reason why Mickey says that they um, put it at the top because they want you to walk through and buy other stuff, totally, for sure, but that brings up the point, the conversation starter then, right, is 
is it worth this is as a business owner as a as a company this is what you have to look at your customer surveys you have to look at that feedback and understand is it worth putting those returns and exchanges on the top floor and making your customer walk all the way up to the top and wait in line to do that with the intent of them hoping to buy more things or is it better to cut your loss there and say no we're going to just provide excellent customer service and make it as quick and efficient as possible in the hopes that that hooks them and that then they decide that they will keep coming back here to shop because they have the best service and there's no hassle. You have to weigh those options and that's that's a real thing which is why I always say ask for feedback. Even if you have an online store, you still want to know that feedback because how many clicks does it take to get to where you're selling the product? Is it easy to find? You know, it still applies even if it's not a retail store, it still applies online. So you have to keep that idea going. So great point, Mickey. Um, so now they have that there and, um, oh, we were talking about the search. So they were able to search on the device real quick. Now here's the other cool thing they had. And they, they've kind of had this before, but I'm gonna point it out now since we're talking about it. They had uh, almost like one of those old school scanner um, posts, you know, like if you went into Kohl's or Kmart or Target, you can price scan. Uh, JCPenney, uh, you know, the old school scanners that are still there, but you can double check the price because we always want to know what the real price is because we know that tag is not always telling us the truth. Come on. We know that it's all in 25% off. I mean, come on. But uh, they have now, it's actually a really giant screen. It's like, let's see, like probably, well, about that big um, of a screen that allows you to search and shop and have it shipped to the store. Or you can have it shipped to your, to your home address if you want. But they allow you in store to go ahead and go through and search for whatever you're looking for while you're at the store. Smart. Then you can either have it shipped to the store or shipped to your house, which is great. So that's how they're tying in online. Now here is where like the aha moment came. Uh, I think it was last night where I thought, you know, cause we had talked about this uh, the other day about all these things that, you know, Toys R Us could have done. And we had such great conversation when we had uh, Eric and Mickey on for the round table discussion. But we were talking about all these things that, you know, businesses, uh, especially brick and mortar could start doing to implement uh, ties between their online and their physical location, and bring people back to the store. So then I had this aha moment. So you guys ready for this? And I'm sure that some are doing this, but the messaging isn't clear enough. So what am I what am I saying? Well, think about how stores we're, we're specifically talking about retail, J.C. Penney, um, Kohl's, Macy's, all these places. Those are like the main ones that I can think of. Um, but which is kind of sad, right? Sears. I don't know if Sears even does this, but uh, it's really, the list is short. But think about all of these retail locations. What have they been doing up to this point for the most part for customers? Can you guess? They have been having customers shop online. What do I mean? Tell me more, Ed. Tell me more. So let's say you're Macy's. Well, we'll just use JCPenney. You're JCPenney, and you're the physical location, and I come in, and I'm looking for something, and you have it, but there's a coupon for it. For the most part, where do I go for the coupon? Do I go to the register? Do I go to the front to get a book? Possibly. Sometimes they do that, especially at JCPenney. But if you think about it, where do we go for coupons? Online. Why? Because they told us to. Download our app. Find the coupons online. So stores 
and and maybe this was just an aha moment for me, but you tell me, stores up until this point have been trying so hard to get online sales that they have now taken all of their customers from the physical location, have trained them to go over here online to then do all their purchasing. But remember, you have now taken them out of your home, remember, websites, retail location, where you can control everything. You have now taken them out of that space and have sent them off into La La Land, Facebook, Google, whatever, Amazon, where they can get distracted. Oh, I was looking for a coupon with JCPenney, but, but why don't I just go check on Amazon? Look, it's, it, I Googled it, you know, JCPenney coupon. The first thing that came up was, you know, your black pants at Amazon. I don't know, because you're going to go to a job interview. Who knows? Um, but, you know, so think about that. It's one of those things where we have been training. I say we, but uh, businesses have had the, the physical location. Then they're trying to incorporate the online location. So what they've done is pretty much pointed everyone this way. Now it's like, oh, crap. We need to get people into our stores. So now we're trying to do this shift back and have this happy medium point which we're not really seeing a whole lot of places do this yet. Um, but that's going to be the next big thing is it, how, do we, how do we make this work? Because we know, we've talked about it with Amazon bookstores, right? We know that's going to be the, probably the best example at this point is that the Amazon bookstores are actually making that connection between online and offline because they've studied the behavior of both sections and they started with less overhead because they started with an online business that then they could work with all that research they got all this money and now they're able to go play so you have to think about that for your business and what you're trying to communicate and and maybe look at these other businesses as well um, when you go for shopping and things like that where are you getting the coupons uh, you know actually I will say Safeway does a decent job with tying things in. I don't know how many of you guys have a Safeway or where, where you shop, but every so often I will uh, I have the Safeway app. And what's cool about the Safeway app is that it will bring up coupons based off of what you've purchased. It will let you scan while you're in the store. And what Safeway does is that they have the actual, um, they'll have the sale price, but then they have another barcode underneath for the the for you, the sale sale price, and all you have to do is scan it with your phone. That's how we're going to see the connection, um, at least at this point, with retail, uh, with physical and offline locations. Like that's how we're going to see them tie together. Uh, Erica says Target creates that pull their yeah the cartwheel coupons. That's right. Uh, you can only use those in store, but they show the discount to you online, so it tempts you to go into the store. Thank you. That's a good one. I, I never use, I go to Target, but I never use the cartwheel app. I'm always like, huh? Eh? Like what? No, I'm just, I'm fine. I just got to get a couple things. We're good. Uh, so that's a good point to uh, have. Target is on, is really trying to uh, stay ahead of the game with their, you know, I think we talked about it a few months back, but they're, they're working on new floor plans that they've been testing. I forget where, but they, they've tested a few different floor plans. They're trying to make it you know, easy, accessible for the online purchaser. Um, they have, if I remember correctly, they have uh, a setup for their test stores where if you enter on this side, you're, you're rolling, you know, I got to get in and out quick. If you enter on the other side, it's more of a leisurely thing and you have time to, to spend. So they're making it so that it caters to both types of customers and they're doing that because they're they're testing things they're they did their research they know that the average person is either going to be in a hurry and needs to get in and out quickly or they want to spend some time i mean that that's just like your two options so if you can cater the store and have those journeys that customer journey mapped out then you provide an experience that's going to suit both parties that makes sense uh, Erica says, I've saved a ton of overtime at 300 at this point. Nice, Erica. Um, so that's how they're going to be able to uh, really start tying things in. And so uh, having this, 
this experience at Kohl's really helps because they, they, they're, they're setting their store up for success, right? They have it brighter. They have wider aisles. They have people there to help you. They have it easy to exchange or return things. They have it easy for you to pick up your online orders. They have a, a kiosk where you can go and create your own online order so you don't have to worry about, you know, trying to do it at home or if you get stuck or whatever. They can easily look up things. Um, you know, it, it's same type of thing if you've ever been to an Apple store. It's kind of similar experience. Um, so these stores are starting to now play around with that. And, and we have to now hope that their marketing efforts will reflect that. And what I mean by that is going back to that comment where I said, you know, a lot of places it's always been go online for coupons. Okay, well, like we were just talking about here, how do we get you back in the store? We need to have store only sales, not online only sales, because that's what we've been doing, right? Because we've been trying to get people to buy online. But if you have a store, a physical location, you gotta get people in your store. And the only way to do that is to have specials have um, an experience that they they want to come back. They want to be in there and feel that experience. They want to feel catered to. Um, you know, they want to see the sales, the deals, things like that. So that that's that's the experience in a nutshell. Hopefully that helps you with whatever you're working on. Uh, again, all of these things still apply even if you have an online business only because you still at the end of the day have a customer journey. Uh, no worries, Mindy. Um, my boys got stuck in the woods trying to chase our dog. Oh, geez. I hope that they got the dog because that would not be good. Um, and that they're okay, of course. Um, but that that's what I want you guys to uh, take with you, especially if you're running an online business. You still have a customer journey, a customer map that you need to go and really understand that journey. Even if you're just starting out and you just got your website up or whatever, like what's the journey like? Take examples, you know, we named a few uh, of the stores. You have Apple is like a top notch example of how their websites are laid out. Uh, I say websites because they have, like they have one main website, apple.com, but when you look at the, each page, it almost feels like its own mini website, um, especially their new education one, which was phenomenal. The way that that was designed is really well. I shared that example. Um, I think I shared it publicly I know I shared it in the Hey Ed group, but I think I shared it publicly too. Um, so anyway, that that's what I have for you guys today. Hopefully that was helpful and that you guys had a great Monday. I know some of you guys are already asleep or about to go to sleep. I still got more work to do. Uh, but if you need anything, you know where to find us here on the page. And I thank you guys so much for showing up. And I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with this. Have a great day.